am i audible to one and all yes ma'am good evening to one and all um i extend a warm welcome to everyone present here let's welcome our guest speaker mr bevas chatterjee who is an special public prosecutor cyber law and electronic evidence and on government of west bengal welcome sir on our uh, online platform you may continue sir good evening to one and all present here i extend a warm welcome to everyone i uh, i welcome our guest speaker mr biswas chatterji who is a special public prosecutor cyber law and electronic evidence government of west bengal welcome sir to our online platform you may continue the meeting over to you sir sir are you there sir you are not audible hello now audible yes sir you are audible audible now everything is okay yes sir okay now let's start uh, welcoming everyone uh, is is something echoing effect is going on no Hello? sir your voice is no sir your voice is perfectly audible okay okay so our topic today is uh, cyber law and uh, i am a, i have a request to uh, the uh, anchor or whoever presenting today's yeah, one our uh, interactions uh, with whom i am i want to know with whom i want i am just going to interact for the last uh, for the coming one year uh, one hour i think you are all a student of law is it hello hello yes sir uh the attending uh, the uh, students who are attending were, are they all students of law uh, actually sir uh, half of the students are from cs department half of a few of them are from law few of them few of might be graduated so yeah okay 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 so uh, see in today's world uh, it's needless to say uh, even after two uh, even after two uh, consecutive pandemics it's now clear sir you are not audible now is okay yes sir so uh, so every day uh, after the two pan uh, consecutive pandemic now it is clear that uh, we all have two identities one is physical identities and another is the virtual identities so needless to mention india is standing on threshold of the world second largest internet user the number of netizens residing in india is all is already crossed the 50% mark of the city populations of the country and merely uh, 60 to 70 persons uh, and maybe more in this pandemic period is added to that uh, for the young generations so recently the uh, pib has come with a notification uh, press circular when they come with the uh, information technology rule 2021 in the uh, on 25th march 2021 Uh, given a, a statistics that nearly 53 crores indians are all the time they're using the whatsapp and uh, and and and, and uh, a considerable amount of crores of people are using the facebook twitter and other uh, social media applications and other only social media application is not that uh, everything but it's it's one of the major platform where, where we can express ourselves 
So uh, that is important. Uh, and uh, cyber law actually uh, at the origin when the uh, internet was started, started to take its own shape since 1995 till date in 2000 and starting on 2021. And within this uh, span of time, uh, I should say, um, um, there are a lot of changes. I think every day, every minute, every second, new technologies are coming up. Uh, it's customized, it's tailor-made uh, to suit our convenience. And it's providing a lot of facilities to us every day. And like any other uh, development in the field of science, it has got both bad and, and good effects as well. And uh, today we can watch the bad effects every day, every time in West Bengal, in West Bengal. Uh, every part of India and every part of the world is really under uh, cyber crimes. We all are heard about every day, different incidents, cyber related incidents, untoward incidents. That's why in, in our information technology act, our uh, the prominent cyber law has differentiated the incidents into two parts. One are called the contraventions and other called the uh, punishment offenses. So uh, there are considerable amount of differentiations between offenses because in offenses, there are the, the important ingredient is the mens rea that fraudulent and dishonest motive. And in case of only contraventions, the the important ingredient that is fraudulence uh, and and uh, and dishonest motives are, are absent. So uh, that's from the legal perspective. But let me let me introduce you with a little bit on techno legal perspective as well. So we are standing on the second largest internet user, and uh, cyber world is now actually uh, is 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 been a long way we have come, and uh, and every day we are within it. And uh, last year, uh, in the year 2020, in the first part of the last year, the Interpol has come with a report. I think you all heard about that report. And, and, and the amount of cyber crimes for or more than 160 countries, uh, there was a uh, forecast by Interpol that the cyber crime was going to be, uh, would going to, uh, be uh, in, on increase. Uh, and, and that has happened, actually, because uh, people have uh, little uh, without uh, except the virtual world to transact their day-to-day -day, uh, business and anything, everything in the contactless uh, pandemic world. So that's the, the inevitable uh, thing today. So we have to leave like any, uh, when you're crossing the road, we have to follow the tra traffic rules, the laws and everything. And the same way when we are in the internet, we have to abide by the internet law of the world and and obviously especially the internet law of the country because it's a central law information technology act is a central law codified by um, at, the, at the at the at the instances or, or initiative by the legislatures of our great parliament now the point is uh, here uh, basically if you, if you go through the uh, you see that the characteristics of the internet is that initially it was a lawless world and it tends to be a lawless world like any anything else. And, and uh, today, when you see that uh, uh, there is hardly any uh, geographical barrier when a uh, cyber crime is uh, is affecting the citizens of the world, the crime may originate from any part of the world, and it can ultimately land it up to uh, because you know in every cyber crime there is either uh, there is always been a device which has been made victim or targeted. Uh, along with a person who has also been made victim. More specifically, a person's uh, device is, is going to be a, a, a target or, or, or victim. So that's that's the reason in other uh, information. And in every uh, legislature today, in almost many countries, we have uh, cyber law. In India, we have Information Technology Act. There are other countries which have got an ICT law. Uh, there are countries in the world who have uh, amended their uh, constitutions but the basic law to include uh, some provisions required for, to rule the, uh, the this lawless world, and uh, and in our law as well as other part of the law, uh, the the strategy uh, or or the procedure or the or the way the law will going to control is there are there are a lot of similarities between all of them. But uh, along with this uh, cyber world and all, uh, there is a very fundamental concept. I think every lawyer who are law students have presence and every person 
may not be a lawyer, uh, this little bit of concept is very much required. And that is the digital evidence or electronic evidences. Because some of the provisions in, under Information Technology Act or cyber law is related to, uh, some of the provisions are related to, um, relate to uh, that uh, uh, digital evidence, especially from section 3, 3A, especially section 4, uh, section 10, and, and these are actually, especially section 4, these are very inevitable uh, 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 provisions uh, and very important provisions uh, uh, in terms of uh, understanding or interpreting the digital evidence or electronic evidence. So uh, uh, basically, there is another fundamental concept that uh, whenever we are making anything or, or or making any file or or creating something for the first time in a computer, we are manage, we are we are producing something, and uh, and and we are after completion of our job, we are we are saving a file in our computer and other means we are, we are allocating a space for that that data to be kept. And whenever in the later part we are coming with that data, that may be through pen drive, that may be through any device or any media. So that evidence is nothing but uh, secondary in nature. And that's the crux of uh, dealing with the um, uh, uh, electronic evidences. And, uh, and that is the reason I think you all heard about the applications of section 65A and 65B of the uh, Indian Evidence Act. So, uh, Indian Evidence Act is actually we have Section 65, which take care of the uh, secondary evidences, where in which situation the secondary evidence can be um, made as an admissible evidence. Because when we are working on, uh, with the, uh, if you if you are a law enforcement officers, if we are a, a lawyer working on behalf of the defense or on behalf of the prosecution, when we are a lawyer fighting in a civil suit and other civil cases and other, we are always or mostly uh, we, are, we are we are concerned about evidence and um, that evidence actually if you go by the definitions of what is evidence under section 3 of Indian Evidence Act uh, it has been uh, that any any uh, there are direct evidences and there are documentary evidences the documentary evidences are the evidences which is actually anything is evidence which is placed before the court for inspection and which includes the electronic record uh, or, or or data or any, anything and which, is, which has been um, uh, introduced uh, in the amended act uh, uh, in the year 2000 uh, when the IT because of the enforcement of the information technology act so uh, this amendment actually inculcates uh, it it it, it uh, encompasses uh, all the areas including the electronic records or documents so uh, today uh, in any crime or in, in any law when we are talking about evidences there is absolute there is uh, there is the inevitable or there is more certainty that the evidence, some of the evidence at least might be in the form of uh, electronic evidence. So in a series of cases in West Bengal, where I've seen the, uh, the, the state, uh, on, I have laid the state on, uh, on or on behalf of the state, I appear in different cases in, and in even conventional cases like the murder, rape, um, dacoity, uh, all these different type of uh, conventional cases, age old conventional cases, you always, uh, uh, I, it, at least I myself as a prosecutor, uh, brought a lot of electronic evidences on behalf of the state to different witnesses. And, and those electronic evidences are of, uh, in later part, it, it proved to be very important and very lethal and, and very crucial um, uh, against the um, real offender. And uh, recently, you know, one of the murder cases um, where the allegation was that one lawyer wife killed uh, her own husband was also a lawyer and in that case uh, the convictions uh, life imprisonment was awarded on the lady and uh, uh, for the charge of killing um, her own husband and uh, and he killed her husband with a mobile charger cord iphone charger cord uh, that was a legal at the date of night when in the flat there was no one else but the husband and wife but the in 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 a, in a criminal case uh, based on circumstantial evidences where there is no eyewitnesses or eyewitness witness in that case the of the conduct the motive uh, all and this and the and the subsequent circumstances are all uh, all very are, are have played all very important role in that murder case wherein uh, on behalf of state i have exhibited the uh, google search data to prove 
to prove a hard conduct after the uh, starting of the case and also other cases where uh, uh, the whatsapp chat communications between the husband and wife the uh, uh, facebook post of the lady uh, the, uh, the accused person, uh, lady and all these actually ultimately helps to prove the guilt beyond reasonable doubt and the lady was our um, uh, light term um, and and she uh, is now uh, behind the bar so in that case also and and any other time recently uh, just this month uh, last week actually uh, there was a uh, conviction awarded in a in a, in a Dakota case where the, the Dakota's actually uh, amongst the jewelries and other also uh, uh, robbed of the mobile phone some of the Apple phones some of the Android phones and those data uh, the, those IMEI number those all details all helps me uh, to prove the Dakota at least to prove the C's uh, articles. And not only that, there's an important technological aspect, which is called the lunar algorithm, because uh, to explain the mismatch between the last digit called the check digit between two mobile numbers, one from the uh, uh, mentioned in the IME number by the manufacturer at the time of the manufacturing of a mobile, and uh, and and uh, uh, and which also uh, and another is a, a mobile number found in the CDN. So. Uh, that has been explained with the help of lunar algorithm by way of one uh, important and crucial witness so these are different type of electronic evidences and if you if you think that uh, you are uh, any time become victim of any kind of cyber crime and anything i think your 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 most important duty would be to uh, uh, would be to uh, preserve the data uh, uh, in in an its original form because uh, the law uh, of the land law of the world is very clear on this point that it is not the evidence which is most important it is how the evidence is collected how it is preserved and how it's presented before the court that's the most important thing and that is why the concept of uh, cyber forensic is coming up how the image has been made and the image has been made in such a way that uh, the integrity of the evidence is been maintained and in like any conventional cases in cyber cases cyber crime cases based on cyber law and other uh, uh, the concept is that evidence has to be relevant and the evidence has to be admissible. Both the points concurrently required to be hold good uh, in assessing the, uh, the, the, the veracity uh, of, a, of, a, of evidence uh, and, and in terms of appreciation of the evidence. So the admissibility point you will get from the amended, amend, amended provision that is 65A uh, of the uh, Indian Evidence Act which says that the contents of an electronic record may be proved as provided in 65B. So it, it, there's an important term that, first of all, if you want to prove anything, you have to, uh, of a document, you have to prove the entire document. And the same happens in case of an electronic record. Say, for example, I'm sending you a mail, uh, 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 negative things are, are there, and you file a complaint against me. And on that mail, if you want to prove that negative part, of the entire uh, mail that the that only negative part you have to exhibit the entire mail now the point is how this email can be exhibited so it can be exhibited as provided in section 65b so it, um, another very catch point of section 65a is that the word phrase that is may be so there's a question of interpretations of may be uh, at the beginning it was maybe or may not be in the parliamentary case uh, because in that case the prosecution has come with some evidence evidence is which is electronic in nature without the statement under 665b from the persons who has given the evidences and uh, and and the, and the supreme court says non uh, non non accept non uh, not coming with the 65b is not federal for prosecution then comes the basir judgment in 2014 when the uh, three bank judge and supreme court said that it's a mandatory precondition so without 65b electronic evidence cannot be made admissible and 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 and, and uh, without 65 b the electronic evidence is inadmissible then come in the case of Bas uh, safi muhammad in 2018 uh, the honorable court says that uh, it's not that if the evidence is otherwise important relevant or or complete in nature so uh, it's not that the only because of lack of 65 b the evidence will be thrown to the dustbin or evidence will cannot be relied upon and going on uh, step further, the other court says that when the original device is not with me, I don't have any compulsion to come with the statement under section 65B along with the electronic evidences. And later on, 
uh, in the uh, year 2020. I think you all heard about the Urjit Pandit Raj judgment, where the, 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 the conflict between the Safi Muhammad and the Basir, uh, one is stating there's a mandatory precondition, another is stating that it may not be, may be or may not be uh, a primary condition. And both of them, because of the, uh, the, the dispute on, uh, or, or a, or a uh, different opinion uh, held by uh, both the, uh, in both in both of the judgment, those uh, sent to the larger bank in origin particular judgment, and in the origin particular judgment, we find a very uh, fantastic interpretations of the entire thing, and 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 two cardinal and important concept of that judgment is that uh, if if I am providing the uh, device under which uh, evidence was first actually collected, uh, in that case, I don't have any compulsion. Uh, uh, to provide the statement under Section 65B. Say, for example, uh, uh, one, one minute. Say, for example, this is my tab. So I'm taking this tab uh, when I'm uh, crossing the road, I was, I was just crossing a road, and uh, I saw in the road there was a one, one person was mercilessly being assaulted by few people and and and, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm sitting in the car I pick up the tab and started recording the video of that in, entire incident and if something happens there after a case has been started the investigating agency can come to me and and make a seizure of this tab wherein just uh, follow my word wherein the video was first time captured so the original evidence is sitting in, in it when I'm giving this to the investigating agency, I don't have any compulsion to provide a statement under Section 65B of Indian Evidence Act along with this tab. But if I say, for example, a lady files a complaint that on her name a Facebook account was created, and uh, the lady has come with a screenshot of the Facebook account carrying the URL on the top, and in that case, uh, uh, there is inconvenience or practically not possible that the lady will. Uh, or, or the investigating agency will take stay with the server of the Facebook authority. So in that case, when the first time the evidence was captured or, or been downloaded uh, or, or stored, so in that case, the a screenshot can be taken as an evidence. And uh, in that case, statement under uh, providing a statement under 65B is a compulsion. So that's that's actually uh, uh, 65B statement is very much important in that perspective. And uh, and 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 another. Uh, in that case, 65B statement is very much required. Now, come to a simple example, uh, which is going to make you the entire concept clear. Who are the investigating agents? So, prior to coming to that, I just going to tell you that I have a YouTube channel for uh, for you all in my own name. It's not Biswa strategy; it's Biva strategy. In Bengali, the Biva means a, a ragini uh, of music. And and uh, it's a Biva strategy, not Biswa strategy. And if you, you spell on my name, uh, that is Biva strategy, uh, to your actually uh, go to the uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel and 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 write it out with my name, B I V A S Biva strategy. You'll find uh, a YouTube channel on my name, and you'll get a lot of YouTube videos into it. And I request you go and watch all those videos, whichever is uh, cutting your interest and uh, catching your interest. And uh, I am basically a uh, certified uh, technical person. I have 11 certifications on different spheres of modern cutting edge technology. Say I am a uh, Bitcoin and 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 and, and, uh, and the blockchain certified professional from IBM, uh, and I'm a cloud certified professional. I work on Azure Cloud on uh, Microsoft, uh, and also. Uh, I mean, uh, recently, at the last, I have completed the certifications in uh, FinTech from Hong Kong University and, and the Cyber Forensic from the Rochester University. So I have a lot of certifications and uh, uh, the, 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 the aim of uh, telling all these things is that if you want to be a good lawyer in the race to come, you shouldn't have any kind of allergy or, <coughs> or apathy <coughs> to a te towards technology. And you have to read a lot every day. And all my YouTube channel videos, I have nearly uh, 90, 95 videos in my channel because I, I say long get times. And also, I just uh, share you, I have a blog, and uh, it may be that unfortunately for long ago, I have just 
written my last blog uh, because sort of want of time and because I have to take in care of the entire state of West Bengal, including CIB, Kolkata Police, and I was standing counsel in before the Honorable High Court at Calcutta for cyber law and electronic evidence related cases. So it's a very hectic uh, lifestyle. Today's deal, I'm out of stations in, in far away a district, uh, and I'm just conducting a murder case, and that murder case actually depends only on electronic evidences. So uh, uh, fantastically, I have completed uh, uh, 12 cases uh, after taking this en engagement, and all the 12 cases have resulted into convictions, uh, uh, and the credit doesn't go to, and, and should not go to uh, me at all. The credit goes to the um, electronic evidence. So the beauty of electronic evidence in the days to come, how we're going to manage with those uh, will remain a, a, a crucial thing. So uh, uh, prior to coming to this, I think you all are aware, um, aware of, so you can also come to and visit to my uh, blog that is in the name of Cyber Chatterjee. So a lot of uh, articles are there. You can go and read on this. I also write uh, articles in So Legal and uh, media uh, platform called Medium. It's an international blog uh, writing platform. I think you all are aware of. And so uh, you'll get all these. I'm very active in Facebook and also very, very active in Twitter. So uh, my Twitter handle is at the rate of Cyber Chatterjee. My blog is Cyber Chatterjee. And I have a page in Facebook in the name of Cyber Chatterjee and Cyber Crime Awareness Campaign for general people. So you can come to those uh, things. And last pandemic, I have uh, made a uh, lot of mobile apps. And all the apps I have myself coded in Java in Android Play Stores. And uh, you can come and one of the uh, and, and one of the uh, apps is on Hindi, on cyber law in Hindi. So you can come and watch those apps. They're all free, no ad, no uh, cost, and nothing uh, attached to it. So it's all you all for students. Whenever I get time, so I, uh, I share my experiences in all these platforms in the way of mobile app, in the way. I have a mobile app. You can go and uh, download that in the name of electronic evidences. And I have shared four of my conviction cases in that electronic evidences app. And all are free. Uh, you can go and install this. So what I was telling at is a very, very basic concept. Whenever you are uh, thinking of collecting electronic evidence, dealing with electronic evidence, working on the electronic evidence, the back of the mind you always have is the concept called chain of custody. So this chain of custody has to be main, uh, has to be retained uh, till uh, 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 in a strict way. And you have seen in, in any of the ways that the chain of custody has not been broken. So uh, the true golden rule of cyber forensic is that you cannot, or nobody is allowed to do anything on, with the uh, original device. And the another thing is that every step has to be documented. So this uh, every step has to be documented concept has given a, a, a new change, uh, the new law concept in the technological sphere, and that is the chain of custody. And this chain of custody uh, is, is, is desired to be maintained because uh, since Last 15 or uh, years or so, uh, when the developed countries uh, uh, was, uh, first saw the uh, internet world flourishing, uh, they have a lot of judgments. Uh, say, for example, you can read the Aklu versus Reno, it's the age old judgment of US Supreme Court. Uh, that Aklu versus Reno has given a lot of definitions, even the definitions of internet and all other uh, spheres of porn of uh, internet porn, child porn, and all these have been discussed into that judgment. So you can go and watch these things. So there are a lot of different type of cyber crimes. You all, I think, heard about it. And we are uh, uh, presently, uh, we are presently confronted with the dark wave and a lot of changes are taking place. And I'll request you to uh, uh, read and watch uh, Ross, uh, Ross's case that is on uh, Silk Road, how the US agencies uh, put their every bit to uh, probe the entire incident. And I have been in the year 2017 in the world's biggest cyber crime conference that is called the Digital Crime Consortium. And uh, I, was, I was invited by the USA government as an honorary speaker from Asia. I was the first Indian and first Asian to be there. And uh, I, I feel very privileged for that. And after my speech, there was another team of uh, um, speaker who was actually there and who worked uh, directly with the uh, Roman Lewski case is a famous Russian parliamentarian son who has been arrested by U.S. agencies, and uh, and the allegation was that uh, he uh, millions of uh, credit cards of the U.S. citizens was hacked. And, and, me, and, and, and yes, 
So sorry to disturb you. Actually, we have entered the end minutes of our session. So uh, okay. we need to rejoin from the another link. Okay, so what do I have to do? Uh, sir, uh, link will be provided. So we have to join from that link now. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sir. So I have to leave from this, no? Yes, sir.